الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد أي لهبة في الله Some of the signs of Ahl Sunnah, Ahl Hadith, Ahl Athar, the Salafiyun, Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah, is listed very briefly in a very nice little risala or booklet called Minhaj Ahl Sunnati Wal Jama'a Fi Da'wati Ilallahi Ta'ala The Minhaj or the methodology of Ahl Sunnati Wal Jama'a with regards to calling to Allah the Almighty and it's a booklet by Shaykh Abdullah Ibn Muhammad Ibn Saleh Al Ma'yar and Shaykh Allama Salib bin Fozan, Hafidullah Ta'ala, or may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve them all and preserve all the ulama of Ahl Sunnah, uh, did the introduction to this book and recommended it. And as we know, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said, إن الله يبعث لهذه الأمة على رأس كل مية سنة من من يجدد من يجدد لها دينها. The Prophet Ali sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, as was narrated in Abu Dawood or collected in Abu Dawood, he said that verily Allah. Since every 100 years, someone to revive uh, the ummah, to revive the deen. <clears throat> and the Prophet والسلام, said in another hadith, لا تزال طائفة من أمتي ظاهرين على الحق لا يضرهم من خذلهم حتى يأتي أمر الله وهم كذلك the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said there won't cease to be a group from my nation that is clearly upon the truth. The haq will always be there. Ahl sunnah will always be there. No one will harm them who differs with them until the hour is established or until Allah's command is established meaning Yom Al-Qiyamah and Ahabati Fillah these Ahadith are a refutation of those people who claim that Ahl Sunnah doesn't exist or say that the truth is with every jama'at or I mean every jama'ah every different group Jama'at al-Tablik has truth the Suf, very Sufi Turk they have truth Akhwan al-Muslimin has truth the Sururiyun they have truth all of these various groups and sects, because there's a difference between groups and sects, and maybe we'll talk about this at another time. All of these various groups and sects according to some people have the truth and falsehood. And I don't mean that they don't have some truth with them. No. I'm not saying everything somebody who goes with Jamaat Tabliq does is false. No, Abedin. Even their ulama, no. They do have the Quran. They 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 worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bi Allah. But they have inharaf. They go against the usul 
of Ahlul Sunnah, and this is why we don't go with and why our ulama advise not to go with Jamaat al Tabliq, for example. But what I'm talking about is those people who negate that the truth, that the minhaj or the methodology, the methodology of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jamaat in its perfection does not exist. Those people who negate that. Because you have callers today, and I've already mentioned their names, and I won't mention their name again, who say that when speaking about the Salafis or speaking about Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah, basically saying that the truth is not with them. And that, you know, they have all these good characteristics and bad characteristics. But you can never judge the minhaj according to what you find in some individuals. No one is kamal. No one is perfect. So we're not saying anyone is free from mistakes, but what we're talking about, why we call ourselves Salafi, why we adhere to the madhab of the Salaf is because we believe that it is perfect. The madhab, the minhaj is perfect. It is based on kitab Allah wa sunnah to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the madhab of the salaf of this ummah, their, their, uh, their minhaj, how they understood the religion, how they understood fiqh, their manners, everything is mahfuz, is protected in that madhab. And the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, said letting us know, verifying this for us, and affirming this for us, and this is how we get this in the first place, when he said, There won't cease to be a group from my nation on the truth. So they're always going to be. Ahlul Sunnah will always be there. Even if they're few in numbers, they will be there. They'll be there. Ahl Sunnah Mujud. The point is, is that we want to be from them. We want to make sure that that is what we're adhering to, and not just on our tongue. I can sit here all day and say, Ahl Sunnah, Ahl Sunnah, the Salaf, but we want to practice that. That's where the difficulty lies for you and I, to make sure that we're adhering. To those principles, those divine principles. Why are they divine? Because they come from the Quran. And they come from the authentic sunnah, the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And they come from the sahaba, radiallahu ta'ala majma'in, how they understood the religion and practiced it. The Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam said, that the best people is my generation. Then those who follow them, then those who follow them. Meaning, that's evidence there, evidence for us to follow the understanding of the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala in Majma'een. Especially in creed and minhaj, what they were united upon. You'll find ijtihadat in fiqh issues. But what they were united upon, that's deen. We, we, we don't have a choice on that. And their students, the tabi'een, those people who met the Sahaba on Iman and died upon Iman. And then their students. That's the madhab of the Salaf. That's the asl. The asl of the Jama'ah is the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala majma'een. As many of the ulama state, Qadiman, the ulama of the Salaf, or our Salaf, those who preceded us. Rahimahumullah <laughs> Very briefly and quickly, we'll just talk about these traits. The first trait he mentioned from the signs of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, in Qiyad wa Ruju' in the Dalil min Kitabillah wa Sunnati Rasulihi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He mentioned that the first sign of Ahl Sunnah is that they adhere and they return to the evidences from the Qur'an 
and the Sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, or the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. This is one of the major signs of Ahl Sunnah. One of the 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 first signs that he he listed, and I don't think that requires much explanation. We take from Kitab Allah wa Sunnah to Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam with the understanding of the Salaf of this Ummah, meaning the Sahaba radiyallahu taala min jamaein, and we already mentioned the evidence for that. The second thing he mentioned is Sami wa Ta wa Taslim lillah wa li Rasulihi sallallahu alaihi wasallam wa Taata ul al Amri min al Muslimin fi ghair maasiyatillah. The second sign he mentioned is hearing and obeying and being content with the the commands of Allah and His Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam. That means Kitab wa Sunnah you're content with. You don't search for another way. You don't say, well, I know the evidence has showed that this is haram, but I want to try to, I need an excuse. I need some way to, to find a practice interest now because I really need a house. I need my first house. I want to buy an apartment. I want to have an investment. So I need to find some excuse or some imam or some sheikh to give me a fatwa that goes against kitab Allah wa sunnah to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa ijma'a salaf hadhi ummah so that way I can, you know, Fulfill my desires. No, that's bil aks. That's the opposite of this. So a sign of Ahl Sunnah is they hear and obey, and they're content with the Amr of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, His commands, and the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and they obey the leaders from amongst the Muslims in everything except disobedience to Allah. And there's a hadith to substantiate that. Many, many, many. If you go to Sahih Muslim. Kitab al-Imara, uh, the chapter of leadership, you'll find that. And in the English uh, translation by Dar al-Salam, it's in the, it'll be some of the, I think the first chapters in the, the second volume. Go to this and just read those ahadith. So many illustrating that that is from the usul of Ahl sunnah that we hear and obey the leader. The Prophet Sallallahu said, Asami wa ta'ala mariya al-Muslim fi ma yuhibu wa kariya ma lam yu'miru bi ma'asiyyatin fi idha umiru bi ma'asiyyatin fa la sam'a wa la ta'a. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, Hearing and obey, hear and obey the leader. Listen and obey the leader. The, the Muslim leader. In those things which you love and those things which you dislike. So you might not like the fact that he's given a harsh penalty for running red lights or whatever the situation may be. But you, you obey. But if he accept in disobedience to Allah, and if he commands you to disobedience to Allah, then there's no hearing and there's no obeying. Ahabatifillah the Salaf of this Ummah understand stand this Nas to mean that you don't obey the leader in those commands of disobedience that he, co he commanded you to. It doesn't negate obedience to the leader ala itlaq, totally, no. But rather in the commandments that they commanded you to do that was disobedience, you, you can't o uh, obey them. For example, if they say you must take riba. Everyone must take riba or they must do such and such and do such and such. That's haram. That's well known. Mansus. That is haram. And an agreement upon. Then these commands we wouldn't obey them in. But that doesn't negate that they're still Muslim leaders and they're still Muslim and so forth. And then that brings up another mas'ala, which this is not the time or place, talking about istihlal, if they've made something haram, halal or halal haram. Of course, we don't obey them in those things. And istihlal is something, not just making those rules, but it has to do with the heart, as Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah said, believing that. So if they do these things, then they, uh, believing that, those Ram, if they say take riba and it is, uh, it is halal, and they believe in this hukum, then this negates their, their Islam. This is istihlal, which will take you out of the fold of Islam. 
So this is very dangerous. And this is different. So let's look at this. This is very different than, than someone doing a sinful act. For example, if you drink alcohol tonight, if you smoke some weed today, if you listen to Tupac today, or whatever it is that you do, and may Allah forgive us all of our many sins, Amin, Ya Rabbil Alameen, and bless us with ikhlas with the battle of Sunnah. If you do one of those things, which you know is sinful, that doesn't mean you're making it lawful because you do that. And even if you order your child, even though that's a great sin and wickedness, if you order your child, you say, son, I want you to smoke this weed with me, or whatever the case is. That doesn't mean you've made it lawful. And Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, and that's sufficient for me uh, as far as the meaning for istihlal, because the takfiris have a different meaning for this and some of those other people who are affected by their creed or have some misunderstandings. Shaykh al-Islam said it has to do with the heart. Istihlal has to do with uh, ittiqad. And I, it's, it, in my research uh, about takfir, you can find it on the internet, it's free. It's my master's thesis called takfir, uh, called... Uh, the Khawarij and the creed of takfir and decla declaring an, uh, a Muslim to be a, an, an apostate, uh, something to this effect. I've forgotten my, the name of my thesis, but you can look it up and you'll find some details about this issue in the second or third chapter and where I got the evidence from Shaykh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah where he said those statements. <laughs> The third thing, the third sign of Ahlul Sunnah that the Sheikh mentioned, he said, Al Habli Ahlul Tawheed wa Ittiba wa Ittiba wa Bukh Adaihim wa Mudafir an Minhaj al Salaf Ridwan Allahi Alayhim wa Hajra Ahla in Hiraf al Bida. So the third principle he said that's another sign of Ahlul Sunnah is that they love the people of Tawheed and obedience to Allah. When you see somebody calling to Tawheed, calling to the Quran and the Sunnah and the Madhab of the Salaf, you love them automatically. And ittiba, meaning ittiba al Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, obedience to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. When you see people, you don't care about their color, you don't care about their nationality, I don't care if he's in the UK, if he's in Birmingham. I don't care if he's in Luton, I don't care if he's in Leeds, I don't care if he's in Seattle, I don't care if he's in Bellevue, I don't care if he's in Hail in Saudi Arabia, wherever they are, or China, Beijing, <coughs> Addis Ababa in Ethiopia, I really don't care. I love them for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whenever I see Ahl Tawheed and I see the signs of Ahl Sunnah, me, myself, personally, I'm, I'm very happy with that. So that's a sign of Ahl Sunnah. That you should, they, they, they love the people of Tawheed. They love it. They don't get jealous. So, oh man, his, his Dow is much more successful than mine. He's so much more popular. Why is he getting so popular? We need to break him down. Why is so and so this? Why is so and so? No. They're happy. They're saying, Alhamdulillah, someone else is taking up the call of, uh, of Tawheed, calling the Kitab Allah, wa Sunnah of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in the Fahm and Salaf of this Ummah. Someone else is doing it. Well, Alhamdulillah. May Allah bless them. May Allah grant them success. May Allah guide them. May Allah bless them with the class with the bat. This is the sign of Ahl Sunnah. And this is what we haven't seen sometimes from some of our brothers and sisters who, for whatever various reasons, sometimes jealousy, sometimes hezbiyah, some other things which affect the heart, sometimes distract the people from, uh, from that. Or the fact that they may not be from Ahl Sunnah themselves. They may claim to be. They may sit with Ahl Sunnah, but they really don't love to see the success of the Dawah. It's not about the Dawah, it's about them. It's about maintaining their status and their makan and their quota. No, that's not, that's not it. You should be happy whenever you see new people taking up the flag of the Dawah, Dawah to Tawheed, or old people holding that flag, or whoever. The main thing is because the, 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 the purpose is that you're calling people to the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not yourself, not to make you popular, not to get you money, but calling to Kitabillah, and I always narrate this statement, but this is such a beautiful statement. Our Sheikh, Imam Muqbil bin Hadi al Wadi'i, Allah Yarhamahu, he said, Dawah to Ahl Sunnah. Who would doubt, uh, 
هي دعوة إلى كتاب الله أو من كتاب الله إلى كتاب الله وإلى ومن سنة رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إلى سنة رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم. He said this beautiful statement. I love this. This that is sufficient. Even when I say it, it makes me happy and it reminds me of that great Imam. And may Allah bless him with Jannatul Firdaus and forgive him of any of his sins and have mercy upon him. Amin. Ya Rabbil Alamin. And this is the beauty of the ulama. And loving Allah Tawheed. Especially though those Imams of Tawheed. Not just the layman. The layman, we love them. But when you see an Imam who exhibited and put his whole life into that. Look at Imam Al Albani. Rahmatullah May Allah forgive him of his sins and bless him with Jannatul Firdaus. Imam Bin Baz. May Allah forgive him of his sins and bless him with Jannatul Firdaus. Imam uh, Sheikh Salah bin Fawzan. Rahimahullah Jameen. And those who came before them who have much greater status. All of the Imams. The Imams of the Salaf. The Imams who, you know, Imam Anowi. Imam Ibn Hajr. May Allah forgive them of their sins and bless them with Jannatul Firdaus. Because they left us behind... What is the NBA? What is the NBA? What is it? It's Al. It's Ulama. The what is the NBA? The the inheritance of the Ulama. You know what the Ulama leave behind? I mean the NBA leave behind. They leave behind knowledge. And those great Imams are the ones who uphold that who left behind books for us to be able to refer back to after their death, hundreds, perhaps a thousand years. Look at Imam Baba Hari, whose book we're doing now. We're still reading his book. How many explanations, how many ulama are explaining it? Imam Baba Hari is getting all that edger. Great Imams. They left behind ilm and knowledge. And they were from Ahl Tawheed and Ahl Sunnah. So we love them for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I don't know what they look like. And I don't need a picture of any of the Imams to look in my wallet and cry about. But I love them for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's, that's sincere love. And that's love of Ahl Tawheed and what we need between us. وَتَعَوْنَ عَلَى بِرِ وَتَقْوَى وَلَا تَعَوْنَ عَلَى إِذْمُ وَعُدْوَانِ Work together on, 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 on piety. And God consciousness. <clears throat> and do not work together in sinfulness and enmity. Allah Akbar. Allah said that. And when we look at it, how in our lives and we see what happens between our brothers and sisters, sometimes from the same dawa, we wonder who's reading those ayat and who's understanding those ayat, who's understanding the fiqh, who's getting it. Seems like no, very few people are getting it because there's so much hatred. And I'm sorry to get off topic, but look at the hatred. You can think about this in your various localities. And I know I've never been to the UK, but I know the UK specifically is very hostile in this respect because I know many brothers from various different communities, from Birmingham, from, from both camps in Birmingham, from uh, Salafi Pubs camp and the other uh, Green Lane. I know brothers from who are in the Luton community. I know brothers in uh, Brixton, Masjid, and this Masjid, and that Masjid, and, and some of the Du'at, I know some of them. And when you see the hatred between those brothers, it's amazing. The dislike between some of those brothers is to the level <coughs> that I'm sure or at least as much hatred as they exhibit toward those people is much greater than what they exhibit towards uh, people who are extreme grave worshippers and others than that. People will fight. They will fight about that. Why did you invite so-and-so to the masjid? If he comes up in here, we're going to do something to him. People threatening people in the haram, in Medina. We know about this. We've heard about it and we've seen it. I know particular brothers involved in those controversies. What has happened? Those aren't signs of Ahl Sunnah. So I'm not saying that those people are Muqtadi'ah. But I'm saying they need to check themselves. And that's for Allah to decide. 
what really, who they really are. Are they really Hizbis in disguise of Ahl Sunnah? Because they want to call to themselves, they want to call to their clique, they want to call to their boys. Or are they calling to Kitab Allah wa Sunnah to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Like Imam Muqbil said, and like before him many, like the Salaf of this Ummah. Like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, wa tasimu bihablilai jamiyan wa la tafaraku. Hold on all of you said fast to the to the rope of the law. And do not divide. We don't have time. We've been divided for a long time. We we don't really don't have time. And I'm gonna leave you this also, this beautiful advice, pertinent to this topic. And it's Musajjal, it's it's recorded. One of our Mashaykh from Hail, Sheikh uh Aidi Shemri, half of the Allah Ta'ala. He was being called and he was given a lecture, and I can't recall the title of the lecture, but I have it on tape. And he was asked about the fitna. This was in some of the beginning of the fitna, and I'm sure even in the West we're aware of some of the fitna that in Yemen of, with uh, Sheikh uh, Hajuri and some of our Mashaikh here in Saudi, or many of the Mashaikh, Khalas, many of the Mashaikh, and now they've taken a very clear thing, and just to make my position clear, uh, which preceded this fitna in a sense that I just didn't personally feel comfortable taking my knowledge and this is the first time I've ever said this openly but from Sheikh Yahya after some very extreme statements I heard from him because I didn't hear the major scholar say that I didn't hear his Sheikh Imam Mukbil saying these things so it just my heart didn't feel comfortable with it so that was sufficient for me regardless of going about this Sheikh Abed said this this one said this that I, I didn't even that, you know, I didn't have to follow the fitna because I knew where I wanted to stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I didn't feel comfortable. It didn't, my heart wasn't content with some of that, some of that extremism. So Sheikh Ayda Shemri, he said, half of the Allah ta'ala, he said that he was talking about the fitna in Yemen. At the time, it, was, it, it wasn't, uh, you know, there wasn't clear as clear lines drawn and Sheikh Yahya was speaking about one of our Mashaikh, two of our Mashaikh, one of my personal Sheikhs that I studied with in Yemen as well, Sheikh uh, uh, Abdullah Mar'i, half of Allah Ta'ala, Al-Adani, and his brother Sheikh Abdurrahman, who both have Marrakis a Sunnah in Yemen. And this infighting, so the Sheikh gave beautiful advice even being young in age, he's probably not much older than me. If he's older than me, I don't know. Wallahu a'ala. Young. And he said, he said, when Ahl Sunnah, if they're having problems like this, he said, and they can't seem to rectify their condition, then this one calls it the Sunnah in his locality, and this one calls it the Sunnah in his locality. Meaning, you don't have to waste your time and spend your time on your brother, even if you know he's got some, some issues. Okay, just to drag the issue on, like we've seen the issue still going on. It amazes me that there's still as much warfare and the lines are still so hardcore towards one another. And I and not belittle my brothers in the UK, but especially there. In America, we have it, but maybe America's so big and it's so spread out. We have, a lot of Salafis don't even know about those communities, really, well, except for some aspects of the Internet. Okay, so we don't have, although it's, I'm sure it's changing, the same level because UK is so small and so compact with those groups and, and, and so forth. But the point is, is you don't have to prolong the fitna. If you've made your case, and even if your brothers continue to talk about you, ignore them and keep calling to Allah and his book and the method of the Salaf. Instead of fueling the fire, and this is what we have, and I've seen even certain Mashaykh where there's a feud going on between them. And one of them, I feel, has been oppressed. But he still keeps feeling the fire. It would be better for him to say, fine, let them say what they're saying about me. And I'll just keep teaching. He's teaching, but he's still feeling the fire. He's still speaking about them. Still new lectures, still new things. Years, now this is going on for years. The point being, call in your locality and let them call in their locality and keep it popping, keep it pushing. Because that fuel that fuels the fire and the enmity between you, and I didn't mean to let this take up so much time. May Allah forgive us. And the second, uh, forgive me, I mean Ya Rabbil Alameen. And the second aspect of that, so he said, loving the people of Tawheed and the people of Ittiba, meaning the people of the Sunnah, and having 
enmity towards those who are their enemies. You know, those people who, who hate Salafis, who hate Salafia. Not, uh, and this is another point I have to make up, make, make uh, highlight. Because someone, say for example, I hold myself to be Salafi, and someone dislikes me, I cannot say they speak about the Salafis. They hate the Salafis. Because Salafi is not about me. I have mistakes. Maybe I, I made a mistake in this aspect of Menhaj. Maybe I made a mistake in Ahida. Maybe I made a mistake in this, or a statement. So Salafi is not around me. It doesn't resolve around me. So this is something we have to be careful of too. Ahabatifillah. Is thinking that Salafiya revolves around us. We need Salafiya. Salafiya doesn't need us. And when we make a mistake, that's our mistake. That's not a mistake in the Dawah. Nor can we attribute the mistakes of individuals to the Dawah. Nor can individuals represent the whole Dawah. La! This is a Akhta Kabira that we see in Tashir. We see this spread around the earth. You spoke about these two brothers or this group of Du'at or whatever, now that means you've spoken about the Salafis. And I'm amazed that even so many students of knowledge carry this the same thing. And, I, and many of those students, I, I hold them in high regard, and they have much more knowledge than me. But I believe this is a big mistake. How can they do this? How can they say that? I just read on the, the other day on the website of one of my brothers who I, I, we sought knowledge together in Medina, and he's much more, knowledge, more knowledgeable than I am. A talib al-ilm, and known for his, his, his khair, and I saw one of his blog sites, and I was amazed at the statement that he said about such and such website or such and such brothers, they speak about the Salafis. Come on now. If they see mistakes with these couple of brothers here, or this website here, or this forum here, that has nothing to do with the Salafis. Because they don't represent the Salafis. No one group or website or what have you represents Ahl Tawheed or Ahl Sunnah. La. We can't say that. And give me Dalil. If you disagree with that point, please bring me the Dalil and I'm willing to accept it. And bring it from the ulama as well. Come, come with statements from the ulama and come with uh, something from Kitab or Sunnah and I'm with you. And I'll take it back. May Allah forgive us and forgive our brothers. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. And then he said, وَهَجِرْ أَهْلَ إِنْهِرَافُ الْبِدَعَ And of course, boycotting the people of... of who've went astray, and the people of innovation. And Ahabat Fillah, again, this is not on Itlaq, and the ulama say, and just to summarize this, and it's, you, Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah wrote extensively about it. A lot of our ulama, there's a lot of more modern day books now in Arabic, and some of them translated in English, which speak about the issue of hajr. That of course it's not every time someone makes a mistake, every time someone disagrees with you, every time, every time, every time, la. But rather, there's fiqh to that, there's fiqh and refuting a mukhalif. There's fiqh and hajr. So that means there's ahkam, there's dawabit, there's criterion for that. And you're looking at the, 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 the harm and the benefit of that. And, and you know, this is not the place to, to get into depth about that. And we've done, we talked a little bit about it and we'll talk more about it in Shara Sunnah as we go along. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you with tawfiq. The fourth thing he mentioned, luzum rukab ulama al So also that you adhere to the ulama the ulama that are practicing, that are well known for their knowledge, and not to go against them, and not to speak about them with evil and harmfulness. You know, great imams. We see people just belittling imams like nothing, like it's like they drink water. They just drink water, and then now the left side of their mouth, they, they spit something about great imams and great mashayikh, uh, mashayikh known for their khidmah to Islam and khidmah to the sunnah, the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And this is something, you know, we're going to be held accountable for, and may Allah help us. Ameen, ya Rabbil Alameen. The fifth thing is another sign of Ahl Sunnah. The fifth sign he mentioned is that uh, uh, basically avoiding fitna and not being a, 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 a cause to be affected by fitna. And lazum <coughs> jim. Jama'atul Muslimin wa imamihim Adhering to the main body of the Muslims and their imam So Ahabati Fillah, we don't want to be a source of fitna We don't want to be one who spreads fitna So I advise myself and advise my brothers and sisters to That when we hear something about someone That we try to verify it Don't just run to the banner Even if, no matter where you hear it from Try to verify it 
And we know uh, the ayat in Surah Al-Hujurat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, tells us <coughs> to, to verify that if a, a facet comes to you, فَتَبَيِّنُ If he comes to you with, with khabr, تَبَيِّنُ then, then verify it. And so, in general, not just for people of uh, Fisk, but in general, that we should verify our information because one of the big fitness that we've seen in our communities is from a lack of verification. And I'm going to give you an example, and I've given this example in some of my durus before, and this is a true story when I was in Medina, and I recall one of the brothers, and he's back in his country now doing dawah, and, and he's a graduate from Kulit Hadith, and he was in his last year of Hadith, and it amazed me. And I mentioned about one of our Mashaykh in Hail, who's the Sheikh of my Sheikh, you know, and I, I love them both, and I've called them both and have good contact with one, especially, especially Sheikh Saeed, the Sheikh Saeed's Sheikh. So when I mentioned something about his Sheikh, Sheikh Abdullah Obeylan, we'll just say, Hafid Allah Ta'ala, then this brother, Talib al -Ain, Last year in Kulli Tahdith means he spent six, at least seven, eight years of his life already in Medina. He said to me, but isn't there some, uh, basically some statements or some speech about, some kalam about uh, 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 Sheikh Abdullah Obeylan? And I said, uh, like what? He said, oh, I don't know, but you know, I just heard there's some kalam. And I, I was amazed. Even though I knew that some particular individuals and they, you know, and that there's people who speak against him. I, I knew this, but I wanted to hear what he had with him, especially him being a person who studies ruat and ruayat and studies the the the, the um, uh, Ta'deel and studies that 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 uh, that elm has much more knowledge than I have, and I was amazed. I was like, wow. Last year, you're getting ready to graduate. Matter of fact, in a couple of months, we were both leaving from a dars, the Sheikh Suleiman or Rahili, half of Allah Ta'ala. And then he said this. He said, oh, doesn't he have some kalam? And I said, like what? He said, well, I don't know. I just, I heard it. Okay. Tabayinu. Because now you've caused doubt in something maybe about that Sheikh. Or maybe it could have been a test for me to put me in a category. I don't know. But the point is, we have to be careful of these things. Ahabatithillah. The sixth and final thing that he mentioned is leaving off being amazed with yourself and claiming knowledge and going against the major scholars, especially in issues of nawazim, you know, of, of new uh, issues that come out and you going against it and being nothing, you know, maybe a student of knowledge, maybe a sheikh, maybe so-and-so, but going against these major mountains of knowledge, not, uh, and based upon your fatwa, I'm not saying if it's nasus, we're talking about if, it, if the, the haq is the haq, but again, these great imams, they didn't get to be great imams except through experience and striving and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raising them and giving them tawfiq. So this is why we respect them and we love them and we pref take preference to their viewpoints. <coughs> so these are some of the signs of Ahl Sunnah and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with the ikhlas with the bat. And forgive me for taking so long, I meant for this to be very short and now I'm sure it's probably gotten into a half hour and may Allah bless us with tawfiq and bless us to be beneficial and bless us to be on our scale of good deeds, not on our scale of bad deeds. Wasallallahu wa sallam ala nabiya na Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah azza wa jal. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan and I am open to any advice or issues if they're legitimate issues or mistakes that I made to uh, correct them or if there's something that I believe not to be mistake at least discuss them or what have you.